this was intense. Took me about a good seven hours today to set up all this new YouTube equipment. So y'all better appreciate the production quality, okay? I would love, love, love to talk to you guys about my winter knitting plans today mostly because i don't really want to talk about the gifts that i'm supposed to be knitting right now uh, <laughs> i would like to tell you guys what my aspirational list is if you are a sweater heavy knitter or a accessory heavy knitter there's a couple of options for everybody let's do this I even came prepared with notes. It's like every week I feel a little more like a real YouTuber. I tripped over my words to say the word YouTuber, so maybe just a little humble pie. First, let's talk about the thing that I am most excited to cast on January 1st, baby. It's going on the needles. Probably gonna cast it on as soon as I'm done with these gifts. Can't really wait and I'm an impatient human. <laughs> I'm super excited to knit the Guernsey Genser. This is a pattern that was featured in the Till Dom book from Santa's Garn. I keep calling it a book, girl. It's a magazine. <laughs> uh, it's issue 2202. I think the title of it is soft. And I love this pattern because I feel like it is not only is it beautiful, but it's interesting texturally. It looks like it's so easy to wear. It just feels like something I would live in um, just on a daily basis. I would just put it on my body all the time. What I'm gonna knit it in is these colors. I have Plotulopi here. Very excited. This is actually gonna be my first experience with unspun yarn. Well, this is sort of kind of a lot. I've knit like some mittens out of unspun yarn. The construction is almost kind of like roving. Very, very, very loose together. Just fiber, baby. But I think it's gonna look beautiful held together with this uh, what is this? With this mohair blend from Ralmagarn, I think that they are gonna look lovely together. And that'll actually give this a little more strength because typically unspun yarn is very, very, very temperamental. Plotulopi, I have heard, is a little more structurally sound than the other ones, but just in an abundance of caution, I'm gonna hold it double with the mohair. Reservations, I am a little concerned. This color is gonna be a little too dark for what I wanna do, but and also do I care? Like if I'm happy in it and I can see the texture, what do I care if y'all can see the texture? No shade, but honestly, why do I care if you can't see it? <laughs> this is for me, I just wanna cast it on. Uh, if you can't get access to that pattern book, um, to that magazine, I would probably suggest to check out the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. I think that one is like the closest dupe that I've seen so far. And I believe if you go into the YouTube search bar, don't go yet, you have to finish watching this video, girl, I saw you. If you go into the YouTube search bar, there is um, a podcaster that I believe put a video out with a whole bunch of dupes for that specific pattern. Check that out. Next. Oh, <laughs> I am anxiously, anxiously awaiting the arrival of my next issue of the Lina magazine. I'm subscribed to all of their magazines. I love their publications. I love their books. They are the same publication company that does 52 weeks of socks, 52 weeks of shawls, 52 weeks of easy knits. Which girl? Book review coming up. Just wait, baby, I'm working on it. I saw this pattern come through. I think I saw it in the hot right now on Ravelry and I genuinely stopped and was like, oh my God, what is that? Immediately, I added it to my queue. I think it's so interesting and so different. And that is the Maplewood sweater by Fiona Alice. So this comes out in the latest release of the Lina magazine. It features a boucle yarn, but the one that they featured there is Woolfolk flit and i think it's wolf oak flit bulky your girl right now it's christmas time i got four kids i don't got wolf oak flit money i barely got mcdonald's money <laughs> what i'm trying to do instead is use up some of my stash which is another goal for 2023 i'm gonna be using these two colors that i had in my stash which is the alpaca boucle mix by drops and i'm gonna marl these two together which i think will look beautiful the really cool part about this pattern is that you have the boucle texture happening all across the sweater and raglan but like 
exaggerated yoke length. And by yoke length, I mean like where your armpit hits, girl, okay? So what I really love about this pattern is that the raglan itself, with the hair out of the way, the raglan itself has a color detail in addition. You can either choose to pick a complementary color to what you're choosing, or you can pick a pop of color, which is what I'm doing. So I am also stash diving and using this Drops Alaska as my raglan detail. I think this is gonna look so freaking cool. I can't wait to finish this and like get it on my body. It is a real close second, I think, to the Plotilope sweater. I don't know, man, the maple wood just, I'm really excited about it. I wanna cast it on right now, but I can't. Okay, all right, let's put this yarn down before I do bad things. Next! <laughs> So the next sweater I'm really excited because I picked it to actually join in on the bougie sweater cow which is being hosted by Young Folk Mint. I know I feel like I talk about her every episode. That's how much I love her. Get over it. Hey Casey. <laughs> Just quick side note, her Arkansas accent. I find myself sounding extremely Florabama. Originally from Pensacola, Florida. Right after I watch her every single time because her accent is so freaking cute and it just brings out all the country girl in me. <laughs> I really, really, really want to join in in this bougie sweater cow. And so I was kind of looking for something that was easy to wear, but also looks super elevated. I know. I too was like, girl, how you gonna do that? <laughs> Ended up with the Helia. Oh, I ain't read no pronunciations down, baby. Y'all gonna have to tell me later. It's the Helia sweater. Helia pullover? We don't know. I am obsessed. It is so good. My friend Samantha and I, we talk all the time about how we love a statement sleeve moments. Like, boom, I'm in here. So <laughs> with that said, I was super excited when I saw how beautifully intricate those sleeves are on the Helia. So I knew that I really, really, really wanted to cast that on in the new year. What I have not decided yet is what my main color is gonna be. In that pattern, she features La Monacomo, which is a, actually a really cool freaking yarn. Just real quickly, as somebody who works in the fiber industry, let's talk about why La Mana is so expensive and also so different. La Monacomo and La Mana Como Grande, those two yarns, when you look at the grams that you're receiving per ball, what would normally be a 50 gram ball of DK only weighs 25 grams. I know. How are they doing that? Girl, nobody knows. But what I do know is it must take an extraordinary amount of skill and a very, very intricate process with your mill to get there. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do the Lamana. There is something beautiful about the way that that sweater in the photo, let me put it back up, how you see those sleeves kind of like balloon out. They have structure, but they don't look weighed down. <sighs> The sample sweater is knit not only in La Mana Como, but also in La Mana's mohair blend, I forget what it's called. Might be Premia, I don't know, I'll put it on the screen. I have been holding on to this freaking colorway by Farmer's Daughter Fibers for forever, and I have to put it to use in a beautiful way, and I think this is the time. I think we have finally approached it. Yeah! Okay, it's happening. This is Odang, which is an alpaca silk blend. Lace weight to like lightweight fingering. I'm thinking that if I do the Lamana Como, I stash dived for this. So that'll kind of even out my price point a little bit. I know, knitter math, right? It doesn't really make sense to nobody else. <laughs> but I think it would look really, really beautiful. I think that if the Lamana does what the Lamana is gonna do, I think we gonna be good. We'll see, famous last words. I feel like when I start this sweater and I didn't swatch because you know I won't, we'll revisit this conversation right here. <laughs> Next. Uh, some of you guys have already seen in my last podcast episode, I'll put it up here, that I am knitting one of the sweaters that have been in my queue for ages. It's time. I'm gonna knit the Finch Fair Isle sweater by Marie Wallen. This is like my ultimate, 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 girl you did it, use a knitter sweater. Some of y'all, y'all over here contacting the woolly thistle for the colorways because I didn't put them in the description bar. We gonna get this out the way, I'ma say them on here, on here for everybody. <laughs> and here's the reason why I know you need the colors. Finch Fair Isle sweater by Marie Wallen is actually a free pattern. The issue is, is that the yarn she used for the pattern is discontinued. You can find it on eBay and whatever, D stashes, that kind of stuff. But I don't know, I just felt like I knew what the makeup of that yarn was. So I just knew I needed to find something kind of similar to that and something that would make me happy to knit with. So I hopped over to the Woolly Thistle and I grabbed a whole bunch of Jameson and Smith two ply 
we about to do this. I'm gonna give you all the colors that I picked that I tried to find the colors that I felt like were most similar to what she had originally used in the pattern. So the picture you see here, let's put it up one more time, boom. I tried to find the colors most similar to the yarn that she had used originally. Jameson and Smith, this color is FC. 43 mix. This is the main color. I think you could probably go even a little grayer. 133 mix, 32 bronze, 14 light blue, FC 11 mix, girl, not upside down, 77 black, and 29 mix. And I specifically tried to choose some of those mixed colors because if you are familiar at all with Marie Wallen patterns, she's a traditional Shetland uh, designer. A lot of the times the yarns that she's using do have that kind of heathery look and that's what those mixes are. Everybody wish me good luck through the screen because this pattern is color worked knit in the flat. I've never done that. It's gonna be a year of firsts for everything. There is a hair, I feel like it's every episode, but who keeps telling me to wear lip gloss? Nobody. So that's it. I'm feeling like this is very sweater heavy, but and also that is definitely the kind of knitter that I am. I am less of an accessory knitter and much more a give me all the garments that I can wear on my body. As she hypocritically says, in the middle of an Arctic cold front with not a stitch of knitwear on her. Killing it. <laughs> Oh, this one I don't have yarn for yet, but let's talk about it. So I really, really, really want to knit the Whitmore cardigan. I have previously knit the Whitmore pullover. You can see it here on my body. And I love that sweater. It is one of my favorite sweaters. So I really want to knit the cardigan version. Let's put that on the screen too. This pattern is by Amy Loudon. And I think it would look so, so cute in something like a little more bright and vibrant. Kind of playing around with the idea of what I want to do, but I'm very, very, very much so leaning towards like a really just disgustingly bright chartreuse. I know some of y'all are like, girl, me and yellow is not friends. Let me let you in on a little secret. For those of us who are of the melanated population, we loves us some yellow, like hard. I'm thinking I may or may not do that. Have a nice, lovely, vibrant moment. Add a little sunshine. It'll be my sunshine with more cardigan. So if you have any ideas of where I could find yarn that you think would look cute for that, leave me a comment down below. I also, just as a side note, oh, not Alexa talking to me. Cancel, girl, cancel. If y'all like any of these patterns, please, 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 please leave me a comment down below if you are also going to cast them on. I need to know that somebody else is knitting these with me for me to feel like I need to be held accountable with you because we're now in my brain doing a tiny two person knit along. Um, this next one that I'm gonna talk about is Aspirational Zipper Jacket by Petite Knit. I think this one is so funky and cool. I know everybody is knitting like the men's zipper pullover or whatever. I don't want that. The idea of all of that next to my neck makes me itchy. I don't want that. I really, really, really love how cool this layering piece is, how modern it looks, Looks, how you could easily put other pieces of knitwear underneath it and not look crazy. And also there's a zipper installation and I've never done one of them either. And this is the year of me getting to do what I want to do with my knitting. So I'm tackling all the projects. I think Petite Knits is originally in like a dark gray, light gray. I don't know, you know she really only be liking the neutral colors. I'm gonna knit mine after I just talked about a chartreuse girl. Here we go, in green. <laughs> this is Harrisville Designs Highland. I love this freaking yarn, man. It's so bouncy and fun. This is 100% virgin wool. What is the thing that they say? Long wearing durable workhorse. I love that. That jacket to me feels like a workhorse jacket, like something you throw on all the time, all the time, all the time. I'm super excited to knit these two colorways together. I think they look so freaking cute. <laughs> green is my jam. And something about this like weird limey green right now, like this chartreuse leaning green is just, oh my God. 
So this colorway is number 83, Grass. And this yarn, I've actually never tried this before. This is from Hobie. I actually just got these guys. And this is their mohair silk. And it has like a teeny tiny bit of wool in it, which I'm actually kind of interested to knit with that. I've actually never knit with a mohair blend that has like an itty bitty bit of wool. And I really want to see if there's some interplay there. If there is like a better enmeshing of the fabric because the wool and the wool meet up and it's like, hey girl, I don't know, girl, let's get some drinks. Kind of want that type of interaction in between the two of them. I am super excited about this. I do not think that I'm actually going to cast this on. <laughs> I already have a bunch going on with these other cast ons. But man, I really, really think that I would wear it. So I'm kind of gonna strategically place it towards the front of the queue after the couple of sweaters that I know, no, 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 that I really wanna cast on this winter because hopefully I can kind of squeeze this one in if I finish up some other stuff a little faster. So I'm gonna give myself a little nudge, a little dopamine rush. You can't, you can't do this if you don't finish that. But that's what I have to do. Neurodivergent for the win. <laughs> We're nearing the end, I promise. I have to knit this because I can't keep watching podcasts where everybody is wearing it and I don't knit it. It's starting to make me angry. It is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. I love this girl's freaking patterns. I think that they're incredible. I think that she is so good at creating staple pieces for people. I have been sitting on this stash from Ritual Dyes for like, mm, like eight months now. I swore up and down that it was gonna go to a different cardigan and I just keep seeing this season's cardigan. I can't do it anymore. I have to knit this one in specific. I love this yellow. See, y'all already know the yellow vibes. <laughs> this color is for Scythia and this is their Elder Base, which is a light worsted climate beneficial, 100% Rambouillet wool. Let me tell you why I love Elder. Elder specifically has this like really cool, bouncy and almost crimpy texture to it. Every single time I like pick it up, it's almost like it's it's a feast for the senses. As soon as you touch it, you're like, okay, you seem a little different though. You're a little special, okay? <laughs> I think that this will look beautiful with all that ribbing happening. Is it ribbing or is it brioche? I don't know, I'm going knitted no matter what. I think it's gonna look beautiful in that texture of that cardigan. Oh no, I still have, I gotta get up, oh no. Ooh, I'm back. Last but not least, I have um, one more thing that I have to have to cast on because my daughter has enabled me. I had to knit my daughter a Sunday Cardigan Junior for the holidays. That's what she asked for me for Christmas this year. And I, of course, am not done. I don't think you guys can see it. Oh, it's over here. You can't see it, which is great. Just pretend that I finished it. I loved it so, 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 so much that I'm going to knit one of the adult sizes for myself. This pattern is also by Petite Knit. It just makes good patterns, man. I am gonna knit my in the super happy pink color. <laughs> it is very bubblegum pink. It is very loud and in your face. And that's the type of time we on for 2023. I'm no longer making myself lesser in a room. You gonna see me when I'm coming. <laughs> this is the color 39 and it's in Drops Air. If you've ever heard me talk about Drops Air, you'll know that it is my jam, my boo, my, my complete love. I love, love, love drops air. It has a cotton core and then there's alpaca and wool blown in to the tube so it makes for this super 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 light texture. Fun part is you can mostly find it um, in Jeff Bezos land so I'll give you one of them links down in the down bar and it's just such a fun experience. I am going to knit with this and I'm not sure yet whether I'm gonna do the cardigan or if I'm gonna do the pullover. I feel like I really can't go wrong either way, but I'm in this like moment of trying to decide which one I would wear more first. I'm feeling like it might be the pullover, but that'll be in this guy and I can't freaking wait. I'm not super worried about casting this one on, mostly because it's gonna take me like three seconds. Um, this sweater was so fast and I am excited to just cast it on and be done. I'm not gonna lie on my feet. Um, I was sitting on top of them and today in old people news, uh, my circulation don't work like that no more. All right, I only have two accessories that I want to knit this time. I really want to knit this hat by Sari Nordland. I'm gonna boop, insert the picture. I don't remember what the pattern name is. <laughs> I freaking love this hat. I think that it is so fun and chunky and warm looking. So I am gonna also knit that out of Drops Air, but we're gonna do it in a super, 
staple colorway, just a nice cream. I think it'll look really soft and beautiful and will also match with whatever I have on. And if this pattern like looks as cute as I think it is gonna look on, that's actually my plan for any of the sweaters that I have that are in like worsted to bulky weight. My plan for all their scraps is just to turn them into this hat because <laughs> I just had this feeling in my soul that this is gonna be my go-to boo hat. That's the plan for this guy. And then lastly, I too am not immune to the hype. Y'all out here just singing praises from the rooftops about the Sophie scarf. And I resisted for a really long time. Personally, I think I should be commended for how long it took me to like finally jump on the train. Y'all were selling it real hard. I'm a knit one. <laughs> I'm really excited to knit something that I feel like I could cast on today, it's popcorn knitting. That means it's really simple. I can turn on whatever on Netflix and just pick it up and I don't really have to think about what I'm doing because the pattern seems pretty intuitive. Honestly, I'm not really, I have a yarn over here set aside to show you guys as what I want to like knit the Sophie scarf out of. I'm not even gonna show it because <laughs> I'm not sold yet. I can't quite figure out what I want the scarf to look like, if I want it to be more vibrant, if I want it to be more muted, if I want it to be a neutral, like I just can't land anywhere. I think what I wanna do first is get some of these knits going, hopefully get them off the needles too, and then kind of reassess and be like, which are the ones that are making their way the most into like my daily wear rotation? And from there, what is the color that would look best with that specific knit? I kind of think I'm gonna strategically plan that way. It should go super fast because I think it's like in worsted weight. So your girl is trying to knit it and quit it, baby. Let's get done. I think that's all I have today for patterns, to be honest with you. Girl, it was more than enough. <laughs> uh, if you watched my last podcast episode, you would know that there was a current drawing for not only the Dom book, but also four skeins of yarn for me. You guys, number one, just blew me away with the amount of people that actually entered. I decided that in the spirit of the holidays, I just want to be generous. So the first place winner is gonna win the yarn and the magazine, and then second place, you get yarn boo. Sorry. <laughs> we have a full sweaters quantity for both. Okay? Okay. Let me get your prizes. Your knees don't work like that no more, girl. Our name is not Megan. Winner number one, you won this beautiful. I've been hoarding it for forever. So this is Spin Cycles Metamorphic Yarn. It is made from their mill ends and all of their extra fibers that they have. I'm technically calling this a blue. I know what I said in the last video. Mostly because it's labeled as a cool black, but when you look at it up close, all you can see are little flecks of blue everywhere. And I think that this is beautiful. So this is a DK weight. It is coming your way. Congratulations. This is now yours. And I hope that you love it. And I hope you give it a great home and hopefully put it into a great project. And second place, baby, I got you too. You knew that I wasn't going to be on here and talk about drops air for 45 minutes and then not give you some drops air. <laughs> so you got blue drops air. Also, I'm going to figure out the yardage for what a sweater quantity of this is because I've got about 40 million of these and you gonna get some of these too, girl. <laughs> that's the gender neutral girl, just so everyone is aware. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you guys for participating in the giveaway. Don't worry, there's gonna be more. If you're not subscribed, I hope you subscribe. If you have a second to just click the thumbs up button, I'm gonna lie, I would appreciate it. Mostly because it makes the YouTube algorithm go, oh, they actually like this video. Maybe we should show it to more people who also like videos like this one. That's it. <laughs> if you have a second to comment and let me know what you're knitting down in the comment bar, I'd love to just talk in chat for as many comments as I can answer back. Hope that you subscribe and stay with me on this little YouTube journey because this is mad fun. I don't think I can stop. I especially can't stop after setting up this whole situation back here. I'll do a community post and show you guys the back end of this, but it's a shit show. <laughs> That said, I hope y'all have a good one. And if nobody has reminded you yet today, your making is art and don't let nobody tell you different. And if they do, you can send them to me and I'll handle that for you. <laughs> Bye y'all.